Welcome to the Counselor Soapbox video channel. This episode, is nicotine a stimulant or a depressant? Nicotine comes from the tobacco plant and is found in all tobacco products. Smokers will tell you that when they get up in the morning, they need a smoke to wake them up and get them going. That means that nicotine is a stimulant, right? Those very same smokers will tell you that at bedtime, they need one last cigarette to calm them down and put them to sleep. How is this working? That means that nicotine is a depressant. How can one drug sometimes act as a stimulant and sometimes act as a depressant? Nicotine is one of a very small group of chemicals which works as both a stimulant and a depressant. Chemicals like this are called biphasic. Pure nicotine is very, very poisonous. As an insecticide in its pure form, it will kill insects like crazy. But as a pure chemical, if it is sprayed on a field and gets on the workers, those laborers will end up in the hospital and may die. So why doesn't it kill smokers quick-like? If it killed you the first time you used it, there wouldn't be many long-term smokers, would there? The nicotine from three packs of cigarettes, if consumed in pure form, would kill the average adult. A child could die from much less. Most of the nicotine in a cigarette is broken down by the smoking and is taken in slowly, a small amount at a time. The result is a chronic low level of the poisonous chemicals in the bloodstream rather than a single large fatal dose. A small child or pet eating a few cigarettes could reach a toxic fatal level. Nicotine's effects depend on the blood level. In the early stages, the nicotine stimulates many responses in the body. The smoker, by taking in that first puff in the morning, believes they are energized. As the day progresses, the levels of nicotine in the bloodstream fluctuate. After each smoke, the level rises. The body principally the liver, attempts to remove the toxin, and the level is reduced. This up-down action creates the cravings the smoker experiences. The administration of any drug in many small doses, particularly by smoking, increases the addiction potential. Late in the day, the smoker will have achieved a relatively high level of nicotine in the bloodstream. At high doses, the nicotine begins to depress systems in the body. Just before bedtime, the habitual smoker will smoke more in a shorter period of time in an effort to relax for sleep. The level of nicotine will slowly fall during the night as the liver detoxifies the drug. Smokers instinctively respond to these low dose, high dose effects. A smoker who is trying to feel stimulated will take many short puffs. The smoker trying to sedate themselves will take fewer long puffs and raise the level in the bloodstream more rapidly. It seems likely that many poisonous chemicals would affect the body in the same biphasic way. At low doses, the poison stimulates the body to defend itself, and at high doses, the body shuts down under the effects of the poison. Nicotine, unlike many other poisons, is different in that it is able to produce these body and mind-altering effects, which users find so pleasant 
while producing the diseases and death slowly over time rather than quickly. Nicotine withdrawal. Another reason for nicotine's calming effects is that repeated smoking counteracts the withdrawal or abstinence effect. As the level of nicotine in the smoker's body drops, they begin to experience withdrawal and become agitated. By replacing the nicotine in the bloodstream, the smoker is delaying the withdrawal and relieving the agitation. Tobacco keeps its users alive and dependent on it for their mood state changes for as long as it can. Tobacco use is connected to mental illness. Why do the effects of nicotine on the body matter to people interested in mental health and substance abuse issues? Because by one report, the majority of cigarettes consumed in America are smoked by people with a diagnosed mental illness or substance use disorder. Hope this video helps explain the ways in which nicotine can both stimulate and depress the body. What's ahead for the Counselor's Soapbox video channel? More mental health and wellness videos, videos on happiness, creativity, and productivity, and videos about drugs, alcohol, and recovery from using them. If you have enjoyed this video, please click the like button directly below. Comments are always appreciated. To receive new videos in this series or any other, please subscribe. Thanks for watching the Counselor Soapbox video channel. For more information, please visit my blog, counselorsoapbox.com, where you will find 1,700 text articles about mental health, substance abuse, and having a happy life. The David Joel Miller fiction and nonfiction books are available on Amazon. Photos are courtesy of Pixabay Common and Wikimedia Commons and were shared under the Creative Commons Free for Commercial Use No Attribution Required License. Thank you for watching.